Last night, I was playing one of my favorite video games on my phone, and I couldn't beat this level. I was like, oh, I can't do it. And I actually went online and looked at a video to walk me through how to win the game. And what I did next is probably common for people who want to really understand and be able to do something. I applied what I learned. So I actually used the techniques that I watched and reinforced that I could do it. I not only did it once, I did it twice to reinforce that behavior. So if you and I are watching a video or some training on Cisco networking gear, and they have a rack of equipment and they're cabling it up and everything else, wouldn't it be awesome if we could, in a very, very short period of time, create that same environment? And that way, as they're teaching the topics on that gear, we could follow right along. Case in point, let's imagine we have a plan for how we're going to interconnect all of our network devices. And we'll save the actual types of cables and crossover straight through for another discussion as part of CCNA. But if the cabling goes something like this, from port 23 here to on switch one, to port 24 on switch two, and from port 23 on switch two, to port 24 on switch three, and from port 23 on switch three, all the way up back to switch one on port 24, now we have all of our devices cross-connected, which is great news. So if we wanna add the router to that, down here we have a router, so we can choose the port that we wanna use. Here's a straight through cable. So we'll go ahead and pick our port there, and connect it up to the switch of our choice on the port of our choice there, and if we have a firewall or some other device, we can choose how we want to connect that. So we choose the appropriate port and we plug it into the appropriate port on that network device. And then furthermore, I've got an access point so we can take the cable for the access point and possibly plug it into a port that has power over ethernet or whatever device we wanted to. So let's choose switch two. Let's go ahead and use port 14 for that. And boom, we have our physical network gear wired together and we can start configuring it and working with it. So as a learner, if we could replicate what we're watching and do it very, very quickly, that's a huge benefit. And so what I'd like to do is focus on how you and I in Packet Tracer can replicate this rack of gear. Well, I don't have a rack at the moment <laughs> because this is actually sitting on a, uh, a bin, which is sitting on top of a heater. I was in a hurry. I just wanted to get it up and available so we could see it. So let me share with you how we can very quickly and easily replicate this environment very similar to this inside of Packet Tracer. That way, if the trainer is going through a scenario, we can do it very quickly along with them and then start practicing in moments, even if we don't have the physical gear. So I'm gonna replicate what we just did here inside of Packet Tracer. And my hope is, is that you've installed Packet Tracer and that you're gonna follow along with me to get these skills on how to use Packet Tracer because it will serve you anytime you need to bring up a topology and start practicing right away. So here we are in Packet Tracer with a brand new project and there's several ways of doing this, but probably the, the simplest if you want to have that look and feel of the physical gear is to go ahead and click on the physical icon right here and then here under the compass, just go ahead down to the main wiring closet directly, click on that and then click on jump to location. And then we can close that dialog box. Now. <laughs> Um, we can zoom in and zoom out using these controls up here, but at the moment we have nothing in our wiring closet and that's why we want to add a new rack. So we're going to use this icon right here to go ahead and create a new rack and boom, we have a new rack. And I will go ahead and click on zoom in to zoom in a little bit on that. Perfect. And then we can start adding our gear. So in, in this topology that we just looked at a moment ago, we're going to add some switches. So down here on the bottom left, we click on network devices and then below that we select switches and then we'd grab the, the closest switch they have in Packet Tracer to the gear that we're trying to replicate. So in my case, I've got a 3560 as switch one, so we'll drag it up. And then I, <laughs> my other two switches are 3550s, they're a little bit older, but they're very similar to 3560s. So I could actually just bring up two more 3560s. There we go, and then we could rename those switch one, switch two, and switch three. In fact, let's do it. We'll click on one and then go to config, and we'll just call this SW1 for switch one, that's done. We'll go to switch two. We'll rename that under the config tab to switch two, SW2. Close that window. And then for the third switch, we'll click on it, click on config tab, and then call that SW3. Just like that, boom. So now we've got three switches. Next, let's bring in a router. So on the bottom left, we'd click on the network devices and below that we'd select routers. And then you just bring in a router that has similar ports or close to the ports for the gear that you're trying to replicate. In my case, I'm gonna go ahead and drag up a 2901. That should serve us well. And this router, which is called router zero, we could rename simply by clicking on it and then click on config. <laughs> device is still booting. <laughs> 
boy, it's a good simulator. Simulate it, still booting. Okay, so I'm going to say fine, and then I'll call it R1. And now that's router one. And if we go to physical, you notice it has a bunch of slots that are currently empty. And so if you want a slot cover on there, you can. We're going to have to power it off. So here's the power icon right here, little one and zero. Click to power it off. And then we'll go ahead and just click on WIC cover. And then we'll drag and drop those covers if you're concerned about how it looks having empty slots without any kind of cover. All right, there we go. And then we'll go ahead and power it back on. That's only if you care aesthetically about how it looks in your rack. All right, sounds good. So we'll go ahead and close that. And then if we scroll down just a little bit, I also have the adaptive security appliance and the wireless access point. So down here under network gear, we'll go ahead and click on security. And we have a 5505 and a 5506. So I'll drag and drop the 5505. There it is. And also we have an access point. So I'll go ahead and click on network devices again. Down below, we have wireless devices. And I'll just go ahead and grab uh, an access point and drag it up. Boom, and there's our access point. So there is our rack of gear. And if we want to go ahead and connect it together, what we would do is click on the connection tool and then start wiring it together. So if we want to control what ports are in use, we're going to want to go ahead and use the straight through or crossover cables between two like devices, two switches. We're going to use crossover cables. So we'll go ahead and click on the icon for crossover cable, click on switch one, and we are going from port 23 on that guy to port 24 on switch two. Now I'll click on crossover again. We're going to go from switch two, port 23 to switch three, port 24. And then for the final connection, we're going to go ahead and click on crossover again. We're going to go from switch three from its port zero slash 23 back up to switch one to its port zero slash 24. Again, this just depends on your design and what you intended to do as far as the interconnections. But what we're doing here is just replicating the connectivity that we had in the physical environment. And then for router one, its connectivity up to the switch network was its port zero one went to switch three's port zero one. So for that connection, we'll click on the straight through option for a straight through cable. We'll go ahead and click on router one. We'll select our desired port. In our case, it's gonna be zero slash one. And then we'll click on switch three. And on switch three, we're also using zero slash one. So it's at the top of the screen. I'll just click it, grab it. And if we hover over this port, it'll tell us the connectivity. So this is saying that on this local device, R1, that it's connected via its local zero slash one gigabit interface. It's going up to switch three on switch three's zero slash one fast ethernet interface. And then we need a connection from the router to the ASA. So once again, we grab the appropriate cable going from a router interface to a switch port, which is what the 5505 has and 5506 has built in. We'd use a straight through cable. So we'd select the port available here on the router one and we select the port we want to go to here on the ASA. I'm going to go ahead and um, choose the last port, port one slash eight on this device. And then if we scroll down just a little bit, if we want to connect the access point to switch two, once again, we would use the appropriate cable. It's a straight through cable. Click on the access point. It only has one port. And then we go ahead and go up to switch two. And then we select the appropriate port where we want to connect that to on that switch. And then last but not least, if we wanted to add a PC, it's easy to do. All we need to do is simply go to end devices and then down below select end devices and then grab a PC. You just click on it and it'll add it. So we'll go ahead and just add it over here and it actually put it on a little table for us. <laughs> if we want to connect that PC, I'll go ahead and zoom out a little bit so we can see this. If we want to connect this PC to the network, we just decide on where we want to connect it. Click on the connection tool, go ahead and grab a straight through cable, click on the PC, select the port, and let's go ahead and plug this into switch number two. So we'll click on switch two and then grab the port that we want to connect it to. And now we have that connection as well. So this is how we can replicate really, really quickly a network topology and physical devices that we have in the physical world inside of Packet Tracer. And there is one other thing I want to show you. Now that we've built this rack of gear, if we go back to the logical view, check this out. We can rearrange this so it looks a little better for us. I'm going to scroll down a little bit so we can see it. We can rearrange this and we have back in our logical view all the details for it. So there's switch three going to the router, which is going to the ASA. Uh, if we scroll down, there's our access point. I'm going to bring that up a little bit and maybe drag it over here. So the great news is that whether we build the network in the logical view or in the physical view, it'll automatically, Packet Tracer will automatically do the backend work for us. And this is an amazing tool to get up and running and get the topologies that are being trained 
very quickly available for hands-on access so we can practice and build our skills. So thank you for joining me in this nugget. If you're watching this on a mobile device or something else, I would encourage you, the first opportunity that you have is take a few minutes with Packet Tracer and practice building a physical rack. And that way you can set up your environment very quickly to get the hands-on practice. So I'll see you in the very next video. Meanwhile, I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.